Hello. Today we're going to talk about how to use Swim in your IDE, specifically JetBrains. Swim's JetBrains plugin allows you to create docs right from your IDE, sync them when code changes, and also find them next to the code when it's most relevant. As developers ourselves, we know how important it is to have documentation when you need it most. But where do you start? How can we create and update docs right within our IDE? Also, how easy is it to make sure that our documentation stays up to date with our code changes? In this video, we're going to answer each of those questions. So let's start off by logging into your Swim account. If you don't have an account, then go ahead and sign up to create your workspace and then connect your Swim plugin to JetBrains. Make sure that when you do sign up, you create an account and during the onboarding, you either take the tour or skip it to go to the account creation view. After creating your account, you can go ahead and come back to the IDE and log in. So let's go ahead and authorize JetBrains to access Swim and click continue. Let's go back to our plugin. And after the install, you'll notice that the Swim extension is located here on the left panel. And in order to get started with Swim, you have to have an open repo folder in JetBrains and as well have a valid Git repo that has a remote. If your repo is not yet part of your Swim workspace, you'll see an option here to connect it right within the panel. If this is your first time logging into Swim, you won't see any documents here, but as you begin to create some, they can all be found here. In the Swim menu, you'll have the option to link out to our web app, create a new doc, and also check the status of all Swim docs. Clicking this button will come in handy when you refactor a lot of code that is referenced or code coupled in any Swim document. If any document becomes outdated through your refactor, Swim will let you know what changes need to be reviewed. And pretty soon, our dev team is working on adding watchers to help notify you of outdated docs with less effort. Additionally, if you have any questions about how Swim works, you can link out to our doc site here, as well as sign out. Before we create our first document, we're aware that code formatters are very popular amongst most developers. So we request that you please exclude Swim documents from them as any modifications to the raw markdown can trigger false positives when it comes down to maintaining code coupled elements within your Swim document. We wanna start off by clicking create to create our new Swim document. We wanna give our document a title and we wanna save it by clicking save or typing enter. So if you notice the file actually closed and reopened, that's because when you create a Swim document, it's saved as an untitled file within your project repo. Remember, each Swim document is simply a markdown file that exists in your .swm directory where all Swim documents live alongside this Swim JSON file. It's important to note that your viewing experience will be much richer when you open a Swim document through the plugin or any Swim links within the IDE please do not try to modify the raw markdown of a swim file as it's going to break some functionality. The swim editor is an enhanced markdown editor with a lot of additional functionality made for developers. All right, let's initialize this document with our slash command. And you'll notice that there are a whole host of swim commands as well as markdown styling options. The code snippet, the smart token, and the path, as well as your diagrams, will stay up to date based on those commands because they are code coupled references. So we can go ahead and start by building this document with multiple code areas. And so we select code snippet. We're instructed to select a snippet from any file. So let's go to our file tree and go ahead and select our first snippet. Let's open up add C, put it to the right. Notice that it's convenient to work side by side having a swim doc on the left as well as your code on the right. It's not mandatory if you want to open your swim documents in this manner. You can, however, go into your settings, type swim, go to the tool, and have that split view open by default or not. Completely up to you. All right. So let's get back to it. Let's highlight 475 to 478 and add it to our swim doc. Right, that was easy enough. So let's select a few more snippets that belong to this flow. And all I have to do is click right below that snippet and begin to initialize with my slash command again. Initialize my code snippet. 
and go to that file. All right, let's go ahead and select this line here. Go back to our document and add it to the doc. And let's add one more. And we'll select these two lines. Notice that you don't have to select the full line. Swim will recognize the entire line when you add it to your document. From here, now we can begin to explain our code snippets and the logic behind this flow of code or why something was written, as well as what to focus on. So I have some pre-built copy here that I want to add to the document quickly. All right, now that I have my explanations within each snippet, what I want to do is code couple a lot of these references within the explanations with smart tokens. So let's go ahead and start by initializing our smart token for command add. So I can remove this and search with my backtick. And swim looks for the references of command or CMD within this snippet first. Then it looks within the document and then it looks for values within the repository. Because I want to reference the one that is in the snippet, I go ahead and press enter and select it. And what you'll see is these ticks that get assigned. Essentially what that means is this smart token was also code coupled and it was verified to make sure that it's up to date. And of course that's true because we haven't modified anything in the source code and we just added it. So that makes sense. So let's go ahead and continually add more code coupled references. Let's actually change the my built-in folder here to a path so I can delete it and initialize with my splash command and select path. I can just search for it once the results come up for the file tree. There we are. Select it and you'll see that that is now a code coupled reference and the path is up to date. If I hover over the smart token and I click it, you'll see that it comes from add.c specifically referencing line 475 and the value of cmd underscore add and that's perfect. So we have three code coupled elements within this snippet. So the one snippet, we have the path, and then we also have the smart token. So let's continue building this out and add more code coupled smart tokens to our snippets, as well as paths. Perfect. And lastly, our commands. All right, so now that we have code coupled our paths, our smart tokens, Swim makes sure that any time that these code references change through a refactor, we'll let you know what changes need to be reconciled within so that way your documentation stays up to date. So lastly, we wanna add a diagram. So let's initialize it with Mermaid, a library that allows you to integrate charts and diagrams within Markdown that display and render beautifully. And what we've done is we've integrated it within our Swim documents. We've made it easy for you to get started with one of their diagrams by just clicking with one of our quick start options. If you wanted a sequence, you'll see that the syntax comes up right below it. And then you have the display text here. I already have a diagram that I want to copy and paste over. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this one and initialize a new one and paste my syntax. All right, great. Let's add some smart tokens to this diagram. So run setup. You notice that I have my results in this document. I'll continue with commands as well as prefix. And lastly, exit status. Perfect. So what this means is you have the functionality because you work within Swim to code couple your diagrams. So anytime somebody comes across this diagram, they will see the display text here, they'll see the flow of code, but they will also be able to know and you reliably will be able to create these diagrams knowing that your code coupled elements here will update the diagram. So if run setup turns into walk setup, then that will be reflected within the diagram. That's pretty amazing, right? So now that we've completed this document, let's go ahead and save it and close it. 
Remember that because swim is a markdown file, it's part of your pending files that you need to stage and commit. This is documentation as code. It's important to realize that until you push your document to the remote, it won't appear in your swim web app and it won't appear visible to your teammates. So we figured out how to create a document and that's amazing. But where is the value if you can't find it? Is it in a location where I know how to search for it? Will I query the right keywords to find the right document? Is it reliable and up to date? With the amount of times that developers refactor code, it's highly likely that your documentation will become stale. And with Swim, you don't have to worry about that outdated documentation anymore. Because we're working in the IDE, we can easily search for documentation just as we would any other normal files. So let's go ahead and initialize our search and search for command underscore struct. And you'll see that we have a lot of results when it comes down to git c, which is our source file. But if I keep going down, I do see results for the markdown file, which is our swim document. And this is the raw markdown. So if we were to open this file, you'll see it in the raw markdown, but it's best to be able to open up and modify this file in the swim editor. So let's close this. So to make your experience more seamless, what we did is include a search functionality within the Swim plugin. So in addition to that native JetBrains search, you can always search here and we'll go ahead and do command struct. And anytime that a Swim document references that value, it will show up and you can easily navigate to that Swim document. So let's go ahead and open it. And we have the Swim editor in view. So the main difference here is you'll be able to search swim documents without noise from other files in the repository. Let's close these documents. And note here that there are these wave icons. So anytime somebody comes across these wave icons within your file, that's an indicator that a swim document references a code snippet in this file, particularly starting at line 475. So we click that waves icon and there are two documents that reference this particular snippet. In our case, we created this file, so we can click it and open it up side by side with the source code. So now as a developer, I get all of the context I need for command add and this snippet, all without leaving the IDE. More importantly, I can also see what the next step is in the flow of code. I can directly open built-in H to see that snippet and understand what the file is about. Once I get perspective on this file, I can go back to my swim document, go to the next step and open git c. This particular functionality of being able to go back and forth and not have to leave the IDE to eliminate context switching will help me go through the flow being explained, understand why somebody wrote something, not just trying to read this code specifically, and that's going to eventually reduce the amount of time it takes for that knowledge to transfer between developers. Now, what happens when somebody makes changes to code that's referenced in a code coupled element within a swim document? So let's go to this snippet and add C right here. If I go ahead and go to command add and change it to my command add and add a parameter to the end of this, let's go ahead and save that file and go back to the swim document that references this snippet. Watch what happens when I click. Okay, great. So swim was able to check to see where the value had changed. We identified command add as the smart token within the explanation. And we also reference command add within the code snippet. So there were changes here, here, as well as at the end where we added a parameter. And the beauty here is the reconciliation process is very simple. So all I have to do is either reselect the right code snippet if something changed drastically, or I can go ahead and accept this change and Swim will update that element for me. And now that snippet is up to date. So now I can go back to this smart token and see this change here, which we already knew. That's correct. We accept it. And then we can go ahead and save this file. We want to go back to our source code here and notice that we have the wave icons, which of course indicate this file. So I can go ahead and now close this file. I can also close add C and go back to my extension. All documents are up to date.
But that's not completely correct because we didn't actually check the status of the documents here. Remember, I mentioned earlier in the video that we will be adding watchers to keep you more informed in real time. We want to hit check status here to make sure that all documents are up to date, just in case there were additional swim docs that were affected by the change in code. So let's click here. And we notice that there was one other document that requires review. So let's go ahead and open that document. And it just so happens to be a similar file that I already had existing, but it does reference those exact values. So let's go ahead and accept those token changes as well as the snippet change. Let's save that file. We can exit out and we can go back to our plugin and now check the status. And you see that our documents are now up to date. This is key in your flow to make sure that all code coupled elements are up to date within your swim docs. Remember, all we have to do is reconcile the changes made before the swim doc gets pushed in our commits. And that way you'll make sure that all of your teammates have the most up to date refactor as well as the most up to date swim documents. That concludes our training for this video. To recap, with Swim's JetBrains plugin, you'll be able to create and modify Swim docs as you build a refactor. You can discover existing documentation in your code base within your IDE. You can also switch back and forth between your code and your docs seamlessly. Additionally, you can check annotations when reviewing or writing new code, as well as eliminate context switching to external applications. Lastly, you can maintain the freshness and reliability of your docs so all of your devs can transfer knowledge without worrying about updated docs. If any of your teammates prefer to work in VS Code, be sure to direct them to that training video. Don't forget to join our community Slack channel where you can share best practices and ask questions directly with us. Until the next training, happy swimming.